features that we've been building for our new major release. That's the Agora 4 Auto SDK. Um, I am Mikanch and I'm joined by Meher. We're both developer advocates at Agora. We also maintain the Agora UI kits for React Native and Flutter. Uh, we also debate which one's easier and better to use. So if you guys can help us out to settle this debate, drop like which one you use more or like better in the chat and we can uh, you know, settle this debate once and for all. So starting with uh, what's new, we've tried to divide this session into three major parts. So the 4.0 SDK is more powerful, simpler to use, and more flexible. So we'll tell you all about each one of them. We'll also give you a sneak peek into the new documentation experience that we just shipped out. And Meher will also sort of talk, tell you how you can migrate to the new version of the SDK. And let's, let's get started. So we released this new SDK last month, and we're so excited to share all the cool things. I, I can't speak that enough times. Uh, we've launched support for all your major platforms. So that's Android and iOS on mobile, Mac OS and Windows on desktop. You have React Native and Flutter as your hybrid frameworks, which sort of work everywhere. And we're also launching support for Electron and Unity. We'll continue to add support for other platforms like Unreal and WebGL um, in the coming months. Web has already been on 4.0 for a while now, so there's no need to make any changes on web. Um, as well as all your platforms that have been on 3.0 SDK will continue to receive support um, for a long time to come. So you don't need to make changes right away. But if you're excited by all the cool features, um, then you should start taking a look at how to migrate. And let's, let's talk about these features. So starting with 4.0 being more powerful, uh, like with all major releases, we have a bunch of stability, performance, and usability updates, improving your overall experience of developing RTE applications using Agora. And the whole video pipeline that you use to build your RTE experience has been optimized. So if you can go to the next point, right from your video capture, encoding the video stream on your device, decoding it on the receiving end, and then finally rendering out that video has received tons of improvements. So you'll have a much better experience from the starting of this pipeline to the delivery and to actually playing it out. We've also enhanced channel management. So you can do things like join multiple channels, publish your videos into different channels, um, decide which videos you want to subscribe to, have really fine-grained control over all of these features. This is combined with fast channel switching. So you can on demand, join different channels, leave them, switch them around, do all of those cool things. And everything's faster than ever before. The feature that I'm most excited about personally is the ultra HD resolution support, which means you can do 4K at 60 FPS. The level of video quality that you can push through the SDRTN is just unparalleled. And the level of detail, the visual fidelity that you can experience combined with the ultra high audio quality is going to be something you've never experienced before. And we're so excited to share this with you and see the, all the cool experiences you guys will build out. Uh, we're also announcing support for 3D spatial audio right from the SDK. So this opens all the avenues for building rich experiences in AR, VR, and other 3D environments. Um, we're also announcing AI denoise. So if you have uh, a noisy background, you can just use the SDK without having to do anything special and it'll remove all of that noise. So your end user experience is crystal clear audio quality um, for, for the devices. Up next, we're also launching our low code video UI kits. These we've been working for more than a year now. We've been slowly building these out with a lot of feedback from the community. All of these have been open source and we're announcing official support to start your application in roughly five lines of code. Uh, this comes with pre-built UI and business logic for both video conferencing and live streaming. So there's nothing stopping you from building your own RTE app or adding RTE support to your existing applications, since you can use the UI kit to integrate into your existing apps and customize the whole experience with just five lines of code to begin with. We've built these to be customized and we're launching support uh, to start with on web, Android, iOS, macOS, React Native, and Flutter. And if you have other frameworks, 
or other platforms that you'd like to see support for, please reach out to us and uh, we'll announce all of these in the coming months. So let's take a quick look at how simple it is um, to build a video conferencing solution with the UI kit. This is a skeleton for a React project where we're just rendering, rendering out our app. You can import the UI kit from the library and you get access to the Agora UI kit component, which you can render in your tree. Um, this Agora UI kit components takes some props, which are your app ID, channel, and token. These are standard across all your Agora applications. And as soon as you provide these to your app, you have a full video conferencing solution built out without having to write anything other than what you see on screen. Up next, I'll give the stage to Meher to talk about what makes the 4.0 release more flexible than ever before. Um, thank you, Ikansh. Uh Let's continue with what's new with the Agora SDK, and we have the flexible architecture of the Agora SDK. So what this offers is a more open and a modular architecture uh, of this Agora SDK, which means it opens up an ocean full of use cases and innovation possibilities to build out your own RDE application. Now you can pick out a component from the voice and the video pipeline uh, to make your RDE application. So a common example of this can be accessing or modifying the raw audio video data and making some application like with voice filters, video filter, or those cute bunny filters. Uh, moving on, uh, with this modular architecture, you get some features like creating and publishing multiple audio video streams. Uh, now, this can be most commonly seen while sharing multiple camera feeds and sharing your screen at the same time to the channel. Uh, you also get subscribing from multiple users across different channels. Now, all of this has been possible because of the new architecture that we, uh, the Agora SDK has chosen. Uh, moving on uh, to the extensions that the 4.0 SDK brings with it. Uh, so to take your RTE application to the next level, Agora offers first party and third party extensions. Uh, now, some of these first party extensions include a virtual background, to swap out your current background with any custom image or colors, video enhancements for beauty effects, video denoising, low light and color enhancement. Uh, we have some other extensions like super resolution extension, AI denoising to remove the noise from your audio feed, voice beautifier, spatial audio and content moderation. Uh, and moving on to the third party extensions, we have a range of vendors who are offering these extensions, including Symbol AI, Bose, Cinevos, VoiceMod, Deep AR, Face Unity Technology, Vision Lab, Banuba. Uh, and Byte Plus. Now, all this ensures that you have your art that you can take your RTE application to the next level. With this, uh, uh, with these extensions, you get the option to add those voice filters, uh, video filters, beauty effects, content moderation, right with just few simple line of code. And you can access these extensions right from your console and get the get started guide from there itself. Uh, and an amazing thing along that has been released with the 4.0 SDK is the new documentation center. Uh, so this documentation website has been built right from the scratch, uh, which has all, about for all the platforms, all the SDK that Agora has. So with this, you get the best user experience with a blazing fast speed, and you get a code preview for every single code block and an explanation for it at the same time. So uh, when and whenever you copy a put copy and paste a particular code from this uh, from this to your application, uh, it's you are certain that your application will work on every single time. Uh, also, the cherry on top for this particular documentation center is that everything over here that you see is completely open sourced. So if you ever run into an issue or find any difficulty navigating through it, uh, feel free to create an issue on the GitHub repository and we'll be happy to take a look at it. 
uh, with the documentation there, uh, we have also introduced three ways to start your RTE project. The first one is SDK, where you can start from the ground up by creating your own UI, implementing your own business logic, and hence making your RTE application with the logic that you uh, want. Uh, moving on to the second method, which is the UI kit. Uh, this is a low code offering from Agora where uh, where we let you, uh, where the users can build an RTE application with just five lines of code or less. So with this, you can simply customize your video calling application, uh, be it video conferencing or live streaming and change the UI or add those RTM, RTC features as per your liking. Moving on to the third integration, we have App Builder. Uh, so App Builder is a no-code offering from Agora where you can simply go to their dashboard, uh, select a template that you want, uh, add the features that you like, and customize the UI as per your liking. So with just few clicks and without writing any line of code, you have an application ready and deployed at the same time uh, without any hassle. So these are the three offerings to begin your project with. Uh, you said, please do uh, sure to check them out on the documentation website. Now, moving on to the migration part of it. Uh, so if you have been using the 3.0 SDK and are currently planning to migrate to the 4.0 SDK, there are some changes that you might see uh, while making these changes. So the first one being the change in the initialization method. So in the 3.0 SDK, we have been using one single command to initialize the uh, Agora SDK. Whereas in the 4.0 SDK, this has been broken down to create and then initialize so as to give you a more granular control over the SDK. Uh, then the start preview method is now a required field to display the stream of your choice. So this can be your front camera, your rear camera, uh, your screen, or any other media input device that you have connected to your desktop. Uh, then we have the ability to join multiple channels using two different classes, that is RTC Engine and RTC Engine EX. Uh, you also get the option to modify the channel publishing options by uh, the help of one single class. So you can add all the configs into one single class and be sure that the channel behaves in that particular prop in those particular pop properties as only. Uh, then we have some platform specific API updates as well, so as to offer the best developer experience possible. Uh, you can find all these changes and updates on our new documentation website. So while making the change or while migrating to the 4.0 SDK, be sure to first have a look at the documentation website and uh, see all the changes and which can help you migrate from the 3.0 to the 4.0 SDK. Um, that's it from our side. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, there is a session by Max uh, following this where he'll be talking about the Agora UI kit. So please make sure to check that out as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining again and have You're a happy also... RT 2022. Awesome. We also have an AMA um, towards the end of uh, today. So if you have questions about the 4.0 release, be sure to join there and uh, we'll have the entire DevRel team answering all your questions. Uh, thanks again. Have a happy RTU.